we've introduced the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. There are actually six trigonometric functions, so we've introduced half of them. In this video, we'll introduce the other half. Share that screen. So let's go back to something you may remember if you are watching these videos in order. When we were talking about how the ratios between these sides are the same, no matter how big or small the triangle is, we said that there were six possible ratios because there are six ways of dividing one side by another. Well, y1 over z1, this way of dividing one side by another, is the sine of 60 degrees. The opposite side is y1, the hypotenuse is z1. Or over here, the opposite side is y2, the hypotenuse is z2. And let me see. This ratio is the cosine of 60 degrees. The adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And where is it? This ratio is the tangent of 60 degrees, the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the remaining trig functions, which are called the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent, are merely the remaining ratios that we haven't given names to yet. In terms of hypotenuse opposite and adjacent, we have the secant and the secant abbreviated sec is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And then we have the co-secant. And because cos has already been used for the cosine, this is abbreviated CSC. And the cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. And lastly, we have the cotangent. And the cotangent of alpha is the adjacent side over the opposite side. Um, however, this is not the traditional way of memorizing the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent. Um, so the tangent is the opposite is the opposite over the adjacent. 
So the tangent and the cotangent are reciprocals of one another. And what that means is the cotangent of alpha is one divided by the tangent of alpha. And the secant um, let's see, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so the secant is the reciprocal of that, the secant of alpha is 1 over the cosine of alpha, and the cosecant of alpha is 1 over the sine of alpha. And this is the traditional way that these three functions are committed to memory. And you have to know these as well. I'd especially like to single out the secant as being a very important function if you're going to go on to take calculus. It shows up a lot there. Let's see. These naming conventions are sort of weird. Like if the cotangent is one over the tangent, you might think the cosecant should be one over the secant. That's not true. It's also not true that the cosine is one over the sine. And similarly, you might sort of intuitively think the cos should go together. So the cosecant should be one over the cosine. Again, you see that's not true. So these names are slightly odd and slightly arbitrary seeming. But as I say, this does have to be committed to memory.